This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got Deborah Thompson with me. You are the CEO of Naomi's Family Resource Center in Winchester. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. But can you, look, we're going to talk a little bit about what Na Naomi's uh, Family Resource Center is about. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, during COVID and the pandemic, you have been quite busy. So let's just get right at it. Can you talk to us a little bit about what Naomi's is all about? Oh, certainly. Um, Naomi's Family Resource Center is what we call Stage One Woman Shelter, which means that we uh, support women and children who are fleeing abuse, domestic violence, um, intimate partner violence, um, and they can stay with us up to a year minus a day. Um, and what we've been doing since 1987 is providing that service. Uh, we, on a regular year, will help 100 women and 50 children. Uh, year over year with uh, what they need. They sometimes come to us with car and bags in hand, and sometimes they come with nothing in hand. Wow, wow. Uh, those are, are just amazing stories to, to be able to, you know, help somebody with, but when you hear the stories as well, too, because, and not only not only COVID, this has been going on for a long time, you know, uh, mm -hmm. victim violence is, is terrible, and uh, it's so nice that people have a resource and, and know where they can go to and can count on you. Absolutely. And we're located in Winchester, which is, you know, smack dab between Cornwall and Kempville and, and Ottawa. So we service a lot of uh, people from those areas. We're primarily in uh, SDNG, but we have so many people that come from Leeds and Grenville and from the Ottawa area. And we're happy to, to, to support anybody who needs our services. Now, do people come to you? Uh, it's just a question I just thought of it. Do people, uh, do women come to you um, that, that are, aren't local? that they don't want to be found. Yeah, they do. Um, we have to be careful with um, how that plays out because once they come to us and they get settled and we uh, deal with their immediate need, the whole goal is to get them appropriate housing. And so um, without going into all the complexities of that, some of the housing depends on where the abuser is. But uh, we have had people that have come to us from Northern Ontario, from Quebec, um, but primarily we are um, Ottawa, SDNG, and Leeds, Grenville. And, and the age you start uh, supporting women is at 16 years old. That's so young. Yeah, it is. And we have had 16-year-old uh, independent uh, adults in the shelter. Yes, absolutely. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's always hard. Um, but, you know, we find that at times, depending on who's in the shelter, if we have older adults, they tend to start working together, teaching each other life skills. Uh, they help support each other because there's a little bit of a sisterhood there. Um, if we have older women, uh, and that's always sad because elder abuse is, is certainly alive in our community. Um, you know, those, those ladies, they really take on a, a mothering type of role and, and help in the house as well. But uh, yeah, every day we can have a different uh, set of individuals with children or without, and uh, we learn to be adapt and be flexible. So, you know, when I think of the age 16 as well, too, like, is it relationship violence or is it is it parental caregiver, that kind of violence you get? Yeah, can be all of those things. Tends to be a lot of parental. Um, um, and, you know, we all know mental health is a concern for mm -hmm. everybody. Um, but especially with the younger teens, it's so much more problematic and, uh, yeah, they're, they're struggling. And, and, and too, when on the opposite end of the spectrum too, when we talk about elder abuse, most often it's family, not spouses. Yes. And, not, and usually it's financial abuse. Yes. 98% uh, of all elder abuse is really based in finances. So it's, it's very sad sometimes. Yes. Right, right, right. Now, so for what I understand too, it's not all, uh, all the support you, you provide isn't just shelter, you, you help people when they're out in the community and, and at home. Yeah, you know, uh, we first is get them stable. So food, medicine, a room, a clothing, those basic needs. Then we work on um, housing and looking for where they need to be. And then once we get that going, because that takes a little bit of time, we talk about what do they need, like education, refer um, references, uh, job experience, uh, therapy, uh, and we set them up through referral systems. Um, prior to COVID, we were having some support services come into the shelter. Uh, we hope to reestablish that once we're COVID free. Um, and as things relax, uh, we're going to be very careful. We, uh, we need to be very careful. A lot of the people that we work with are not vaccinated and, uh, and live a transient lifestyle. So 
we're very careful about that, um, but we look forward to building relationships again in our communities with with people who can help and people want to help. Uh, we're very fortunate that there's so many wonderful people who have expertise that really want to give us their time. Absolutely, you know, and and you know, right away, you know, you need a you need a roof over your head, you need safety, you need shelter, but you know, as you go on. Uh, yeah. let's get you back in, as a, a member of, of the community, of society, and provide the help you get. And, and like the, the things that I, I've written down here too, like financial support, family yeah. and criminal law, like the, you, may, mm -hmm. you may need that kind of help too. Absolutely, and we have lots of referrals and connections to legal, medical, educational, uh, psychoeducational schools. We work with the schools to get the kids in school. We can do homeschooling if we need that. We have a child and youth program that we work with, <clears throat> excuse me, we have an outreach program, you know, we'll talk to people, we run a 24 seven crisis line. And if anybody is just feeling like really um, either nervous about potentially being a victim, or being a victimizer themselves, we encourage people to call, we have staff that will talk to people all hours of the day and night. All right, all right. Now, you know, we, we, we've talked to we've spoken to uh, a lot of police officers and, and, uh, uh, during COVID and, and we've spoke about, uh, you know, we've talked to victim services, people that see this kind of violence too, can they, you know, call you on somebody's behalf? Or what would yeah, you they suggest? Can. I mean, they can, they can always call to get information. Certainly if they're calling on behalf of somebody to come in, we like to speak to the person themselves. We do have a, a, a criteria that we have to meet. But, you know, if anybody say I'm calling for some in general information, absolutely we will let them know. Um, uh, what they need, how to encourage their friend, family, or or, uh, or loved ones, what to watch for. We talk a lot about safety planning, not only for mom, but also for the children, and to give some tips on how to get prepared if they feel that they're at risk, uh, signs to look for. Um, so, and uh, we know that a lot of moms sometimes will plan an escape to, say, for example, at the end of the school year, so that they don't disrupt the lives of their children. We also know that if women have pets, they want to make sure that their pets are cared for first before they go. 45% uh, of abused women um, experience uh, pet violence. So uh, they're very careful. They're very oh. careful and they, they, they work it out. Yeah. But yeah. we're happy to, to, to help people along with those tips and strategies. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it just goes to show you how strong uh, women can be too, you know, when they're mindful of their children and pets and their, their extended family around them too when they're exposed Absolutely. to such, such kind of violence. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, for sure. So now, now Naomi's, uh, do you take donations? How does that work? Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. We're a registered charity, have been since 1987. Thank you so much. We have uh, our website can take um, Canada Helps is a, a program that we use that takes online donations. We can take e-transfers. There's always mail. Um, anything over the phone, always feel free to call. We're happy to talk to folks. Uh, we do have a couple of uh, first fundraisers coming up that we've been able to to look at since COVID. We 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 didn't even go down that road. Yes. <laughs> we were busy cleaning, <laughs> but we do have um, uh, Mother's Day tea starting up uh, an event at Terrace Green B and B in Winchester, and that's coming up in the month of May. And we'll have some information on our website. And we also have a a, a cloth, a KD cloth that's uh, clean your windows. So I think spring cleaning and we all want to get our windows open for the good fresh air um and so we're going to have a little bit of a campaign for that and we'll have some information on our website about that as well excellent excellent and i met you last week at uh, community living yeah. north granville where the knights of columbus made a very generous donation to yes. to you uh a thousand dollars yes yeah they're, they're an amazing group i really enjoy the knights uh always have a lot of fun and uh, they've been, uh, they and a, a few other councils around have been very generous with their time and their giving. We appreciate it so much. You know, service groups are, are just uh, one of the hallmark foundations of all charitable um, operations and they really care about their community and they take care and, uh, and we appreciate it. Oh, they certainly uh, understand the, the need for a place like Naomi's too, and, and they made that, ge mm -hmm. that generous donation last week too, So as others do, I've heard too. So, yes. uh, How long have you been with Naomi's? Been there since 2019, so um, been in the nonprofit charitable sector for years and years and years, um, but uh, the, this um, women's shelter is new, uh, so I had lots to learn, um, but uh, have met with uh, a lot of my um, colleagues in the area and 
Well, there's about five or six in the Ottawa area, a few in East Granville, South um, Dusty and G. And uh, we're also part of a provincial organization. And so we meet on a regular basis just to talk about what's happening in each corner of the province and of the country. So I, I'm interested, like you used to uh, work in places like Montreal and Toronto, and now you're in small town Winchester. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I always jokingly say that something's gone wrong with my career. I was born in Montreal. <laughs> And uh, when I was in my 30s, and so I started my career uh, working in, in business and then um, moved to Toronto and um, started started my family there and then uh, found nonprofits. So I worked, I, I was a volunteer all my life. And so that was part of uh, getting into that was easy for me. Uh, worked at organizations like Big Brothers Big Sisters, YMCA. Um, and then I had the opportunity to become the executive director of a group that worked with young parents and um, pregnant parents uh, in Mississauga. And then I went on to become the ED of a national organization. And then I moved to this area of the woods and this op opportunity came up and uh, the board of directors was kind enough to extend an offer. And I've been there since. Right before the pandemic. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you were talking about volunteers, do, does Naomi's take volunteers? Yeah, normally we do. Right now we can't uh, because we have very, very strict guidelines. A lot of the way that we operate is close to what people would expect in a long-term care. So we have very, very strict uh, um, rules from the province. But normally we would. A lot of it can be either fundraising, administrative, um, board of directors, and then we have people that sometimes have a skill or a talent and they want to come in and show. So, and you know what, you never take anything for granted because somebody might say, well, I know how to knit and crochet. Um, is there any interest? Well, we ask. And then, you know, you'll find that there's a whole generation of folks that will say, I never learned how to do that, you know, or I didn't have a really good relationship with my mom. So I never learned how to do that. Um, cooking, baking, those things. Um, and people do local fundraisers like Oh, we're going to do a spaghetti sauce canning for you. That's wonderful, you know, because we have to feed people every day. Um, you know, at the beginning of, of COVID, if you recall, there was the great toilet paper scandal, right? Everybody was purchasing. <laughs> well, we have to have it all the time because we have up to anywhere between nine and 14 people in the house every day. So wow. there's three meals a day and, and there's, there's lots of that. So, so we have those kind of things happening. Christmas time, the the community is generous uh, beyond belief, but uh, yeah, there's lots of ways to get involved. We're looking at re-establishing our volunteer program this summer. Um, you know, it, it really depends on, on what's happening in, in with uh, the general health of community. That's right. That's right. All right. So whereabouts? Uh, I, I can't. I shouldn't say whereabouts. How do people get a hold of you? <laughs> um, certainly, we have our website is NaomiCenter.ca. And our local number is 613-774-2838. Um, and certainly that line is manned 24 seven. We have people uh, working every day, every hour and no problem, feel free to call. All right, all right. So Deborah Thompson from the Naomi's Family Resource Center, you are the CEO. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna have you back. We're gonna talk more about what's going on there. Uh, and uh, things opening up, and, and I know there's going to be some more fundraising too. People are very yeah, supportive. Thanks of so these. very much for the opportunity. It's been really great to talk to you. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, opening up the windows and letting in that warm, fresh air and uh, getting, we're going to wash that uh, COVID right out of that's our right, hair. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. For sure. Thank you very much for joining us, All Deborah. Right. Thank you Thanks for everything you, you do. Thank you.